Today I'm in chasing the world of adventure for the opening of the world of Jumanji. Today is the first day uh, of a full opening to everyone. It was already open a couple of days ago for press and influencers, but today is the first day with a virtual queue line, which is a brand new thing, kind of similar to the uh, Disney parks. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, the area, the two flat rides, the coaster that you can see already there. Uh, we're gonna have a look at the gift shops. Uh, I'm gonna try to measure the hour capacity of the free rides. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you how the new world of Jumanji looks like. Nine, eight, seven, six. In the area there are lots of easter eggs, uh, one of which is this one which is the car that it's used in uh, Jumanji the Adventure in Gardaland. Let's have a closer look at it. And then you got both numbers which are apparently the release date of the Jumanji movies should be and uh, lots of other things in the area like this massive uh, um, Land Rover that you can use for selfies. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, quite a lot going on in terms of teaming, which is not bad. Of course, the queue is for the coaster, which is uh, Velocity Monkey. That's the name. I'm in the queue now and uh, they are dispatching a train every decade uh, which is uh, what probably everyone was uh, expecting in terms of capacity uh, which is going to be the main issue of this uh, coaster. We really put the worst fans ever to take pictures. Nice. Uh, first impression after the first ride, uh, mm, boop. Uh, so, uh, it's a uh, family wing coaster launched uh, boomerang uh, of BNM, but uh, it's not intense, it's not fast, uh, it's got this inversion, but it's pretty slow. Uh, the thing is that being a BNM, you would expect a really fluid uh, uh, and nice ride, while well, this one is so bumpy. Uh, it feels like this coaster needs retracking, uh, and uh, it opened today, basically. So I, I don't really know what they managed to do, but how they managed to get a BNM coaster uh, so uncomfortable. Uh, the thing is that the launches are not uh, quick, are not fast at all. There is this inversion, but it's pretty slow. Then the final helix uh, is not trailer, it's more uncomfortable uh, because of the position uh, you're sitting and because you're hanging uh, on the top of the uh, helix uh, for quite a, a long time. 
Uh, so far, uh, really disappointed by this coaster. Uh, it's family, yeah, we got it, but uh, I don't think it's a, it's a nice ride. The most uh, worrying thing is how bumpy it is. Uh, it's just a joke. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna ride it again and again and again, changing positions because apparently, according to the side and the seats you are on, uh, the experience is completely different. Uh, so let's see if it gets better. I'm now queuing for the third ride uh, on the coaster. Uh, I've done both sides, uh, kind of uh, middle seat and uh, uh, back seat. Uh, not the one facing backwards though. Uh, different, but still super bumpy. I don't know really what went wrong with this coaster. Uh, now I'm gonna do the third ride. Let's see where I can take a seat. Uh, and I've already booked uh, the fourth one, which is like to be the last one of the day. In the meantime, I renamed the coaster again. It's not Velocity Monkey anymore. It's called the Bumpy Monkey. And I'm here to answer the question, who is better? Bunky Monkey or Velocity Coaster? I'm now on my fifth ride, and now the virtual queue is returning immediate slot. There is no wait at all. In the meantime, people are queuing for Dragon Furies, waiting for that to open. Hmm. Done the last row, the one uh, backwards facing, uh, and uh, yeah, it's much better. The launches are nicer, uh, it, it, you get much more uh, intensity from the coaster, uh, which is here. There you go, the coaster. Uh, so, uh, still mild, but uh, the last row facing backwards is much, much better. So unfortunately this coaster is uh, all wrong. Um, not really the coaster itself, which is, uh, well, whatever, but uh, operations are super slow. Uh, I kind of knew that the capacity was gonna be low, but uh, they got it all wrong. Uh, there is this massive issue that they cannot get, let the guests uh, uh, go against uh, the air gates. So there is an extra gate uh, far away from the station. Uh, where people are queuing. So when the train gets uh, uh, into the station for onboarding, there is no one at the gates. Uh, this is slowing down even further operations. Uh, then there are no lockers. So everyone is uh, going with their own uh, belongings and leaving them next to the train, which is slowing down. Uh, then for unknown reason, there is a uh, door, uh, like a cabinet door uh, going against the exit. So people cannot exit, cannot leave the station. Uh, all in all, it's just uh, a joke. Um, operations are really, really bad. Uh, I'm going to measure the capacity, but I think it's going to be embarrassing. Uh, it's unbelievable that considering that the coaster is brand new, uh, they haven't figured out a locker system, same as uh, uh, Europa Park, uh, uh, Arthur, uh, or Energylandia, or, or Fly. They could have at least uh, uh, um, make operations in the station a bit faster, considering that already they got this uh, massive air gate issue. Uh, all in all, uh, really disappointed in terms of capacity, but I'm gonna measure it.
The virtual queue system so far is working. You can book uh, multiple slots. So once uh, you use the, your QR code, you can book another one. Uh, so far you can get uh, uh, the following slot in around uh, one hour. Uh, but keep in mind that despite being the opening date, it's Monday. Uh, I would expect the thing to explode during our weekend, uh, probably. Uh, but so far, so good. And uh, this is the flat ride, which is called the Rise of the Bird, which is a kind of standard off the shelf uh, flat ride, uh, kind of fanfare style. Currently, it's got 30 minutes. I'm gonna measure the, our capacity. So I've been trying to launch this one for a couple of minutes now, but keep opening and closing the restraints, and it doesn't go. And after four minutes, here we go. And uh, this is the other flat ride, which is uh, the Snake of the Galaxy. Uh, again, it's an off-the-shelf uh, uh, flat ride that you can find in uh, fun fairs uh, easily. Uh, not a lot of teaming going on, uh, but it's kind of nicely put in the, in the area. Uh, currently, it's got 15 minutes. I'm going to measure the hour capacity. So done the two flat rides, well they are basic, uh, uh, kind of fanfare style. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but it's taking ages to uh, uh, well, dispatch them. Uh, and currently the ostrich is uh, loading only two people per gondola instead of three, uh, just because we got uh, weight issues generating downtime, this is what they said. Uh, so if the capacity was crap, it's getting even worse, yay! They're clearly not ready, uh, despite the slow operation, it's the first day, whatever. Uh, but there are not even containers for, you know, backpack or your belongings uh, next to the ride. And they were fixing the uh, chain to manage the queues in front of the people in the queue. Nice. Apart from the rides, uh, the rest of the area is nicely landscaped uh, and uh, has got the shape of the Jumanji uh, game board. Uh, apart from that, in terms of offering food and drinks, uh, it's pretty limited. There is currently only one uh, uh, food stall offering uh, giant turkey legs for a limited period. And uh, we don't really know what is going to happen afterwards. Uh, there is also an arcade with the usual uh, uh, Merlin arcade games uh, that you have to pay for. And uh, uh, as expected, there is a gift shop uh, which uh, you are gonna uh, enter when leaving the coaster. Uh, the offering of a gift shop uh, is uh, uh, pretty similar to the one in uh, Jumanji uh, in Gardaland, Italy. Uh, plenty of Jumanji branded merchandise, uh, lots of uh, uh, textile and garments, uh, uh, games, uh, and the usual uh, uh, Jumanji uh, games. Uh, uh, including the super premium version which is uh, an extortion uh, what i found really unusual is that the shop is actually open there is just uh, uh, this uh, uh, temporary cover on it uh, but considering the english weather it's a bit of a brave uh, choice especially because all the garments is displayed outside so in case of rain they probably need to just uh, dismantle the whole shop quickly uh, which again, it made me feel a uh, kind of uh, a temporary and cheap execution of a gift shop uh, uh, compared to the other gift shop that you can find in Chessington World of Adventure. Today I'm going to measure the capacity in two ways. One is going to be just the length of the cycle of each ride, uh, which gives you like a kind of maximum impossible uh, capacity in case uh, uh, loading uh, and uh, offloading of the trains will be zero. Uh, and then the actual capacity uh, based on how the rides are performing. Keeping in mind that today is the first day, uh, so it might be, you know, a bit slower than usual. But the fact that the coaster is working only on virtual queue uh, is kind of a declaration of Chessington that the capacity is an issue.
While talking about the capacity, I'm going to leave a footage of a loading procedure, which of course have been speed up, uh, so you can realize yourself how slow they are. I said uh, um, I'm going to talk about this uh, impossible capacity, which is based on just the ride cycling non-stop, based on the uh, length of the cycle. Um, Mamba had uh, 15 minutes uh, uh, queue, so it was not a massive queue, and the cycle is around uh, two minutes, so that would give a uh, theoretical impossible uh, capacity of 500 people per uh, hour. But as said, the loading procedure were super slow and uh, they managed to dispatch uh, the ride three times in more than 15 minutes. Now, let's calculate 15 minutes to be generous. Uh, this returns a capacity uh, of only 200 people per hour, which is pretty slow. For Ostrich, it's a completely different story because the uh, ride had 30 minutes uh, all day long and in theory it's got 14 arms uh, and each arm can accommodate three guests. Uh, but they were loading only two guests per uh, gondola because they had issues with overweight, uh, downtime, the ride is not working properly. In theory, considering the cycle is around two minutes, this could uh, deliver 1,200 people per hour, but they were... <laughs> They managed to dispatch the ride only three times in half an hour, and this returns an embarrassing capacity of 170 uh, guests per hour, even lower than Mamba. Uh, so this was really a pain to watch, 170 guests per hour. So for the cost, uh, well, we knew it's got one train only, it's a boomerang and blah, blah, blah. But uh, Merlin said uh, they were really impressed about how B&M addressed the capacity issue. Now, looking at the ride, it's like, what have they addressed exactly? Because uh, operations look really, really bad. Not really the operations in the station, but outside of the station, this air gate issue is killing the operations. Guests are not allowed to be on the um, platform uh, with, uh, when the train is ready to onboard uh, guests. But we need to wait uh, outside of the platform. And uh, being a wing train, the platform is on both sides. The one that are going to go on the other side are not even allowed to do the bridge uh, that goes over the train. And so they need to wait all on the same side. Uh, this is killing operations, of course, because it takes ages for people to reach the train, which is already there, ready to, uh, for them to onboard. I'm really not sure what they are thinking, uh, what the issue is. Hopefully, they're going to fix it. Uh, anyway, they launched uh, three trains in 10 minutes, and this returns a capacity of around uh, 500 guests per hour. Uh, the operators are actually running and pushing and putting a lot of pressure on guests to try to speed up something which is... Uh, um, not working to start with. So I do appreciate their effort, but because the operations are completely wrong due to this air gate issue, uh, there is not much they can do. Also, there are no lockers for this ride. Day. Of course, the rest of the park is completely dead, uh, but really badly. <laughs> and uh, it's actually the best uh, opportunity to enjoy the park. Because uh, in that vampire that usually got a lot of queue, uh, is currently running at five minutes. And riding Vampire was actually a wake-up call. I mean, look at this station, how heavily team it is. Uh, it's got sounds, it's got music, it's got a pre-show. Uh, and Vampire itself was running with two trains, a kind of uh, taking the revenge <laughs> over Jumanji. Uh, and uh, it was actually a nice ride. And then look at this area, how nicely teamed, uh, uh, not cheaply teamed. Uh, this is actually to prove that uh, Vampire and the Vampire area are actually much, much better than Jumanji area and the Jumanji coaster, unfortunately. So it's uh, 20 past five, uh, the coaster is down, broken in pieces, and all those people are still in the queue. Uh, the park closed uh, at five, by the way.
And here we are on the way out of the park. Uh, I've been spending most of the day in the uh, world of Jumanji area. I've uh, been riding the uh, coaster like multiple times. Uh, so here is the review of the world of Jumanji. So the area itself is a kind of quick and dirty implementation. Uh, to be honest with you, it's not bad. Uh, teaming is there, there are lots of details, uh, photo opportunities and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but still, uh, it's not as nice as it could be. For example, there are not food and drinks, apart of a small uh, food uh, uh, booth there, but there is not a, a restaurant or, you know, a quick service, um, you know, restaurant or whatever. Uh, there are no toilets for unknown reasons. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, the area is not that bad, but uh, there is a lack of details and, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, TLC that you would love to see. Uh, for example, how many different styles of fences do you need in a bloody area? In theory, one, everything looks uh, amazing and coherent. For Merlin, apparently you need 25 different uh, fences. Uh, then, the attraction. So, the coaster, it's good-ish, but... Uh, I didn't really like it. I think uh, uh, the experience is really bumpy, uh, it's not fast, uh, uh, it's not thrill, it's more uncomfortable uh, than uh, uh, thrilling, to be honest with you. And uh, I think the whole thing, it doesn't really work out. Uh, now, capacity per hour is a joke, it's around 500 person per hour and uh, um, operations are mortified by, by this air gate uh, issue that they got now I'm not sure if they're gonna fix it but still uh, they haven't got any lockers uh, uh, they cannot get people on the um, on the platform uh, they got one train only so they're not gonna fix it dramatically uh, also looking at the train itself uh, or uh, at the riding experience there is for example no on board soundtrack which is something that you would expect now and being a wing coaster you would expect like near miss and lots of steaming uh, along the track which is nowhere to be seen so not really a good experience uh, in terms of flat rides they are just pathetic they are perfect uh, uh, flat rides for a fun fair not for a theme park uh, but also uh, uh, they are struggling with operations, so it's taking them ages to launch uh, the flat rides. Uh, they keep having issues with the restraints and, and all that. Uh, it's been really hard to watch, but also the flat rides themselves are just boring and pathetic. So uh, for me, the era is kind of nice-ish. Uh, the rides, all of them, are a big no. Say that. Uh, the coaster is not that bad, but for me it's a wrong coaster. Why? Because it could have saved money uh, and just pick up a Vekoma mine train, for example. Two trains, lots of teaming, uh, long, uh, you know, track. Uh, would have been just a perfect fit for a family-oriented park. While Merlin, as usual, they wanted to be like the world's first of something, and they ended up having this uh, wing coaster launched, uh, boomerang, whatever, which is like, yeah, on paper, it's a world first. In reality, it's just boring and a bit pathetic. So for me, uh, I would say the area is kind of nice-ish, but it looks really cheap compared to other areas of the same park here in Chessington. Uh, and there is a lack of, as I said, services uh, in the area, which is a bit annoying. Uh, in terms of free rides, unfortunately for me, it's a big no for all of them, including the coaster, uh, just because they could have uh, uh, opted for uh, better op uh, options. Uh, so say that, word of Jumanji, unfortunately, no. And that's the end of the World of Jumanji review from the first day of opening. And if you like the video, please subscribe.